All right, God bless you. Good night. Everyone that's uh, watching tonight, God bless you. Um, just want to let you guys know that I'm coming on tonight. I uh, got a special guest tonight. And I'm going to bring him up now. I'm going to bring him up right now. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so my special guest, here he is, uh, hey. all the way from Denver, Pennsylvania. This is my best friend, y'all. This is the guy that's rolled with me for 20-plus years now. This is Jose Gonzalez, my man. God bless you. Um, how's the Lord treating you today? Too good, man. Too good, yo. Um, <laughs> you know, loving Jesus, um, filled with the Spirit, you know, um, we um we were thanking God because honestly we don't deserve to be here. But um we decided to take two dudes from Brooklyn and um just continuously lavish grace upon them and we still we still don't understand it fully. We're still looking at it from one side and like, wow, you know, but one day we're gonna get the full picture, man, the full revelation. Thanks for inviting yeah. your boy, bro. I love you. Yeah. I love you too, man. We've been riding, you know, 20 plus years. And, you know, sometimes like, you know, we've had some of the same struggles coming from the same place, um, spiritually and naturally, you know, so I just want to, just wanted to have you on tonight so you can talk. Yeah, that's right. Your wife just posted, yeah, Jonathan and David, <laughs> definitely, definitely Jonathan and David. Uh, <laughs> uh, just wanted to come on tonight and we just want to talk to people that, have been struggling, you know, with um, asking God the question, can you put me back together again after I've been through sexual brokenness? And, you know, that's the title. That's the title of the video. And, you know, I just want to talk to you to, so, so you could just share something that's upon your heart, because I know that, that you have a testimony from this, you know, like I said before, you know, right now you're in PA, but you know, we come from the same place, East New York, Brooklyn, and we grew up with some of the same issues, like I said before, spiritually and naturally, you know, so I know that you know about this. I know you can shed some light. And, um, you know, so basically, you know, what, what I want to what I want to say before, you know, you can before you start to speak to the to the to the people out here is that, you know, I remember that uh, about five, uh, three years ago, about three years ago. You know, I was I was a dude that I was caught up in in just, you know, sexual immorality and a lot of sexual issues and sexual bondage. And it's amazing that, you know, I just walked into your house one day and I went up to your library, saw this one book um, called At the, At the Altar of Sexual Idolatry, written by Steve Gallagher. And um, after that, like my life has never been the same because this book is so biblically practical. And, you know, that's that's how I know you to be biblically practical when it comes to every step of your life you know so i just appreciate you know god i just appreciate you for that you know i just appreciate that that you just walk in that biblical practical life you know and and this book was able to show me you know the steps to biblically how to get out of this so you know i know the answer is yes you know but there's some people watching right now that they're just saying there's no way no how that the answer is yes you know so mm -hmm. um I just thank God for you for that, that you said, dude, you said, take it as yours. And I just took it, you know, read it, ran with it. And a year later, you know, I was able to, you know, the process was just going forward and it, it, it just quickened. And, um, you know, two years later, you know, I could say that I haven't watched pornography in two years, haven't, you know, dabbled in, in the selfish act that comes with pornography. You guys know what I mean by that, you know, two years later. So it just started, you know, three years ago in your house. And, you know, I just thank God for you. And the question tonight is, can God put me back together after, after being sexual, sexually broken or after sexual brokenness? So, you know, um, how did you get your hands on this book? And, like, how did it impact you? Um, how did it impact you, you know? Well, um I just want to say what's up to my man, um, Vern, Pastor Vern. What's up? Love you. Um, no, um, just um, 
Ish, my man, Ish, what's up, baby? Love you. God bless. Um, no, um, I was um, it's crazy because um, brother um, out here, he he runs a youth ministry and um, he got these books um, one time and um, I remember this is when my brother in laws were like starting to um, you know, just you know, you know, step into the faith and um, <clears throat> the material and the um, and the classes that they did um, it was just very open and I said, wow, I gotta. At the time I was leading youth and I was just checking it up on it and um um his, his name is Jim Horning he runs a um awesome um group out here and I I, I stepped into it read it and I was just looking at it man I said wow this is tough you know and um you know um you know I was just like saying to myself if we can be open if we can just learn how to be open about topics such as this instead of keeping it closed in. Um, it can do so much for the church, and um, I believe I believe we are. Um, I, from the time when I was going to church, um, when I was in my youth ministry, I was struggling hard. I was struggling hard with um, pornography. I was struggling hard um, with questions of, um, you know, is this right or this wrong? Um, I felt condemned. I felt guilty. I felt like someone was always watching my back. I felt like someone always knew what I was doing, even though I, I had it concealed. Even though, um, you know, I, I, you know, I thought I had my whole life um, in check, but I still felt like someone was watching. I felt like I was going to go to hell. Um, you hear like, you know, if you do this, do this, you're going to go to hell. And you got all these ramifications, but yet there's some type of sincerity inside of you that you want to serve God. You love God. You know he's real. But it's just like, man, I have so many things in my closet right now. God help me. Um, and I, I think that... Um, for us right now, we, we really need, and in a topic as sensitive as this, we need definitely to allow the Holy Spirit to um, be the author. He has to be the one that guides us. He has to be the one that leads us. And I think we need to learn how to extend grace, freedom, and mercy to those that we lead, those that we help, those that we, we, we continue to walk through in life. This is sanctification is the word. I don't want to get Christianese. I don't want to throw Christianese out there right now. Sometimes we could throw these theological terms, but it's a word and it's found in your Bible. If you, um, if you read your Bible, you'll find a lot, you'll find it a lot in, in the book of Romans. Um, it talks about sanctification. Now, sanctification is a lifelong process. That means that every Christian goes through sanctification and every Christian in his or her life, okay, whether it be through sexual temptation whether it be through financial crisis or or, or 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 learning how to raise godly kids or whatever the case may be the holy spirit takes you to the road of um sanctification and that's a lifelong process um just because you let's say for instance uh, you two months or three months pornography free and all of a sudden boom it hits you you're like oh man you know what the heck that just happened doesn't mean that you're, you're you're condemned to the eternal fires if you have a repented heart. Remember, keyword a repented heart. Um, it just means that you're going through the road of sanctification, and that as a Christian, as a man or woman of God, um, you you have to realize it's the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit of God that has you in this road, and He's leading you to places of conviction, places. Uh, of um, um, of victory, and, and those moments though before getting to victory, you're gonna go through some stumbling blocks because you have flesh and you have a, a you ha you struggle with the carnal imperfect nature, but um the Holy Spirit is key. But yeah, um to get back to your your, your question, dude. Um yeah, the, that that book was um was a good book. Um I didn't fully get to read it, but what I've read of it, man, it it, it, it has some awesome resources and um yeah, it, it was good. Yo, shout out to um New York. I love New York. <laughs> That's right. I love the mug. We love our Yankees. <laughs> We're gonna be at the stadium soon together. Uh huh. Um. So, you know, great thing about the Bible is that you know it talks about processes and it gives us an outline on how to get freedom, how to get freedom in Christ? Why is there freedom in Christ? How is there freedom available to us? The Bible tells us that. Now, the great thing that I love about our relationship, you know, like I said, we've been together, riding together 20 plus years, um, that 
we can do something that the Bible tells us to do. We can walk out something that the Bible tells us to walk. And this is what I want you to talk about, because you touched on it earlier, um, talking about, you know, these uh, topics in the church. Um, blessings to you, Pastor Vern. Miss you, man of God. Um, James 5.16 says, confess your, your trespasses to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. So it mm -hmm. says, confess, pray, and then be healed. And I never forget, you know, one day I called you and I said, yo, man, this thing is killing me. And I began to cry. And I began to cry like I've never cried in my life. You know, and I was on the phone with you. It was a Saturday. It was a Saturday morning. And I called you and I said, man, this thing is killing me. I can't get away from it. I can't, you know, it's just, I, I don't know what to do no more. You know, and I was just like, man, I've never cried like that in my life, man. This thing had me broken, you know. So, but I confessed. You know, we prayed with each other. And then obviously, you know, even though it took a while, you know, but there was healing, you know. So, um, you know, I, I know I know that you've seen this process work, this biblical process work. So can you just give me like a testimony or two without, you don't have to mention names, but can oh, yeah. you give me a testimony or two about confession, prayer, and healing? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you know. Man, I think I think one of the biggest misconceptions, and 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 this is um, you know, I wanna I wanna be um, I wanna be um, I don't want to segregate any type of group, so I, I wanna be um real and, and all the all, all the testimony that I share. So like, the the biggest misconception, the biggest lie for <clears throat> anybody is okay if I get married, that temptation is gonna be gone. It's the biggest lie. Um, in fact you start to realize that there are things like, just like you have an iPhone, right? And, and, and the battery power is running. You're like, yo, why is this running? You know, you didn't close apps. You close apps, you know what I mean? All of a sudden the battery power is going to run well. Well, it's just like, uh, it's, that's the same, same way, same, um, same concept. Um, there are things that are open. There are doors that are open that, um, that we need to, like I told you um, before, you need the Holy Spirit to, you need to depend on the Holy Spirit to lead you to close those doors because Satan has some type of um, um, foothold. And I don't want to give too much glory to this dude because he's defeated, but um, he, 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 in the, he, plays, he plays a role in this. And then you, and then there's things that, you know, that, 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 that you've struggled with in your childhood. There's things that you've, you know, catered to, um, in, in, in your life. Now you're trying to produce, you know, you're trying to produce fruit for the kingdom of God remaining in Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's like, man, you got this flesh, you know, what do I do? So, um, I think one of the biggest things for me, and I can be real with um, everybody watching is, um, that in my marriage, um, my first couple of years of marriage, um, and, and, and there's moments that I, I still have to catch myself because the truth be told is that we have a flesh, we have the flesh and, and we need the Holy Spirit to continuously lead us and empower us. So, um, in my marriage, there, there was moments in, in, in that I was noticing that there were some types of, um, misconceptions. There was things that I didn't close. I didn't surrender to Jesus Christ and his Lordship. Um, and you know, we call him, um, Lord and savior. Sometimes we take the savior and, and we don't allow him to be the Lord. And, and when we say Lord, he lords our lives. That means what happens in the bedroom. That means, you know, um, and a lot of things, you know, um, and what we allow to go in our minds, what we're viewing on TV or, or the media, you know, uh, media consumption. So, you know, all those things, you know, I, I, I'm walking in that. And I, I'm, to this day, I'm still walking in that, allow, surrendering it to his lordship and allowing him to continuously lead me to a place a, 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 a conviction to a place um, where I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to sanctify me and to and to give me the grace that that, that I truly need. Um, so my marriage has thrived only because of Jesus Christ, not because of me. I'm not good. I'm not impressive. Not in my best day, dude. Um, for those that know me, you sit with me for probably like five minutes, ten minutes. You start to see the ugly. You start to see the stuff to, to surface out. You know what I mean? Um, but God, but God. Um, he, he, he's still good. He's still faithful. And, um, he allows me to, to see the goodness and his mercies and his grace in my marriage. So, um, you know, as, as, as a young man, when I was, um, going to church, I was struggling in viewing pornography. 
I was I I I was I was um performing acts that were just unholy, and I knew that you know I was I was not only doing that um to you know I I I wasn't closed doors. I was affecting people around me. I also was affecting myself. I was I was I was um not I was not um honoring the body that 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 Jesus Christ gave me. So um I felt like man I want to help, but there was nobody to talk to in the church. I felt like. And you know, I'm not I'm not judging the church. The church is beautiful. Um, the church mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we do have our mistakes. We do have um, sometimes mm -hmm. that, that you know, you know, there's times where we feel like we we're closed doors instead of being open doors. Mm -hmm. We're closed, and, and we contain the gifts. We contain the ministry. We contain everything that God wants us to pour out into these lives that are in need. Because not everybody that sits down in the church is um, in a place of maturity. They are in need of guidance, discipleship. So, um, as a young man, I was I was in need of discipleship. You know, I was coming from a home where where mom was going to church and dad wasn't. Uh, I was coming uh, coming home from uh, um, going home um, to see my dad. Um, you know, drink, um, come out, come to the house one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Um, mom and dad fighting. I love my parents, but the thing was is that there was unequal yoke, and 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 to that point, and to that point. Um, I was seeing a lot of inconsistencies. I go to church. I'm seeing the Holy Spirit move. I'm like, wow, I want you, Jesus. But when I'm coming home, I'm watching BET 106 in part. I'm watching the music videos up late at night. And all these things were starting to, to create something within me. It was, a, it was a battle within me. Yeah, I want Jesus. But man, the desires and the lust of this um, flesh for this world and the things that it has to offer. So it produced something within me that lusted for and, and, and craved for pornography, um, craved for, 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 for crazy stuff. And, and to make a long story short, um, I was so wanting to talk to a youth leader, mm. to a pastor. But mm. I felt I felt like if I would do that then I will go to a place of, 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 of discipline. I will go to a place of people are going to know what I'm doing and they're going to advertise that in the altar and like, you know, he's not good enough. He's not, he, he's not, he, he can't sit up here. He has to go sit in the back and be shunned. And, and I, I was carrying with that though, man, like, like for real, you know? And um, until like when I, when I came out here, you know, I realized like um, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, um, fast forward a couple years later, you know, um, I really uh, had a broken heart um, and um, involved in a lot of sexual sin. And I I came to Jesus Christ and I said, I want you because I I'm just tired of running with this thing. I felt like a baggage. And um, the the pastor, the altar, I felt like she knew me and she just she just prophesied word, you know, and what prophecy is, is just basically the Lord just blessing you and just giving you words of, of encouragement, words of knowledge, and just really like hitting me in points where I'm like, yo, you're not supposed to know all this. I think mean, this is my first time meeting you here in the altar. What the heck is going on? It was a God thing. And um, from that point on, I never looked back. Um, pornography, um, I, I, I gave it to, to Jesus Christ. Um, um, involved in involvement in sexual sin, surrendered to the Lord, and He supernaturally took it away from me. Sometimes that grace is extended to to to, to people, and then sometimes this is that that sanctification process, like I was sharing, it doesn't mean that you're I'm better than anybody just because somebody's struggling with sexual sin. No, it's just you know th those things that 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 we cannot explain. But yeah, those are the, uh, my testimonies in a nutshell. Man, I take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah, gotta so, cut, you gotta cut me, so you gotta cut me sometimes. No, no, nah, nah, it's cool, man. This is good. You know, you talking, man. Um, so you, so you confessed it to the Lord, mm -hmm. prayed it to the Lord, and He healed you. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, the James five and sixteen came through. You know, because you confessed, you prayed, and He healed. You know, like you said, for some people, there's a grace like that that happens. Um, instantaneous, you know, obviously I know people that, you know, did drugs and alcohol and they were just instantaneously healed. But obviously we know that doesn't happen for everybody. There are extreme situations where God needs to get you out right now because, you know, if not, this thing is going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you were one of those, but it's still the process is still there. You prayed, mm -hmm. you confessed and you were healed. You know, so it's a biblical process. It's a biblical stepping stones that, that we have to go through. 
you know, it was in your heart. You had a desire. You said, Lord, you know, I want to get out of this, you know, and, and you just confess it to him that you just no longer wanted to be that. You, you, you had it in your heart that you wanted to talk to a youth pastor, to a pastor, you know, so you had it in your heart. You know, you prayed it, you gave it on to him, and he healed you. And, you know, it's, it's just amazing the, the way that he works. Because even if you didn't confess it to somebody, you know, in the natural, like, you know, to me mm -hmm. or you, um, you still went through the biblical process. Mm -hmm. And you still, you still, you still confess, you prayed, and, and you were healed, which is amazing because we still see the Bible in action. And, and this is something that, you know, we are going to definitely touch on October 19th, you know, the, the, the conference, um, the Forbidden Fruit Conference. You know, we're just going to talk to people biblically, you know, biblically about how God restores, renews, redeems, you know, takes people away, you know, from brokenness and puts them back together. You know, so we also got coming, something coming up in Meriden, Connecticut, December 8th you know, in, in regards to, you know, sexual bondage and things of that nature. So I'll be putting that up soon. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think what, what, what I really want you to talk to people about uh, at this moment, um, I know that you've seen others, that you've seen others come through this process, you know. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, uh, tell somebody quickly about not only Jose Gonzalez, but somebody else that, came to Jose Gonzalez and now has the freedom that you and I now share in the Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to this particular issue. Cause we've yeah, been, man. go ahead. Yeah. Um, so like, it's crazy. So, so like, um, I can't, I, I, I got a couple people, but, um, I want to, I, I want to share about one person that, that really means a lot to me right now. Mm -hmm. Um, this is my wife right here. Um, right, <laughs> oh, wifey, okay. right there. Nice. Um, come, come over here for a minute. 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 I'm gonna hit you. Well, um, I think it only um goes right because um, oh, yeah, Mrs. Um, Gonzalez, no doubt. Can't really um share my testimony without um without sharing hers. This woman right here. This woman mm -hmm. right here. Let me tell you something about this woman. She's amazing. Um, God, God has done a lot in her life, right? <laughs> a little shy right now, but but just just, just 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 say what's up to them. Just say what's up. Hi everybody. There you go. So that's my wife right there, and um, so like it's crazy because <clears throat> when I came when I came um out here to PA, I was in sexual bondage, um, and then she too was in sexual bondage, and mm -hmm. um, two familiar spirits uh, or multiple familiar spirits, whether what whether what way that works, um, were feeding off of each other. So we were the hosts, and as 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 they were feeding um off of each other, and as I knew the truth, she didn't. There was some type of seed there that was that 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 was still remaining, and um it's funny how faith it's, it's amazing how faithful God is, but um you know I came out here with that baggage. She had that baggage, and we were gro we were going from bad to worse, and um she had same sex attraction she was um struggling as a bisexual um we um engaged in, in in crazy debauchery um as 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 boyfriend and girlfriend um she wanted she wanted a commitment from me so i i just basically said okay let's get engaged i had no sense of like committing to a woman i had no sense of marriage i saw the marriage in my household with my mom and dad I just wanted to have fun and do me. Um, and in the process, um, um, knowing the truth and knowing what I was doing um, to myself, and not only that, but I was carrying her to a flame, uh, a flaming furnace. Um, the, the, the truth be told is that one night, while we engaged in something just so catastrophic, um, she came, she, it, was, it, was, it was a sexual sin. Um, she came and she opened her eyes and she said to me the next morning, Jose, and this is a girl that didn't know nothing about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Didn't know nothing about the, uh, the redemption or why Jesus died on the cross. Didn't go to church. Didn't see no Sunday service sermon. She came up to me. She said, Jose, I feel like I'm going to burn in hell. I'm going to go to hell. And when she said that to me, knowing that I what the what the information I knew, the seed that was um, imparted to me, I said, "Come on, are you kidding me? This is no coincidence. This is God like trying to get to my heart. I'm over here feeding off this 
sexual thing. I wanted to keep on. I didn't want to hear anything about Jesus Christ at that time. I just, I just was like, yo, come on with that. I don't want that right now. Wow. And, and, and there was moments where, where it, it got her to an anxious spot. She bought, um, you know, um, out here in, in, in PA, you got Walmarts. I know out there in New York, they're trying to get them out there to push out there. You know, um, she went to Walmart. Um, and, and she got a worship, um, album. She played that thing. It bothered me. I didn't want nothing to do with it. I was like, God, I want to push this God away from me. I want to do it. But the more I pushed is the more his love and grace pushed back. And let the truth be told, man. I'm telling y'all for all the people that are watching, um, tonight, Jesus Christ is real. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know um, what type of a sin that you may feel like holds you and you're in a, going down a slippery slope and there's no exit. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one can go to the Father except through me. He's the door to your um, your exit. You know what I mean? He, he He's the door to your breakthrough. You know what I mean? He was the one that got broken. He is your breakthrough. He mm -hmm. broke through, okay, all that trash that had us in bondage and said, I am your blessing. Yeah. I am your breakthrough. And I came down for you. And, you know, I had a mother praying for me. The, 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 the prayers of a mother yes, do not yes. go avail. <laughs> and, and my man, Chris, could definitely testify to that. You know what I mean? Right. My, my mother prayed for me continuously. And, you know, there's moments that just didn't look good. And she just kept on every afternoon getting on her knees and praying for me. And, 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 and so because of that, you know, eventually, man, I knew where I had to go. My wife was going to a place of anxiety, depression, all types of uh, thoughts that were just killing her. And, and, and she wasn't even my wife then. But yet there was, I felt like this sense of responsibility. I need to point her to Jesus mm -hmm. because I know the truth. And even though if I'm not going to get married to her, I still need to let her know who God is because she's struggling. And if I know if somebody's struggling, if I know someone is going through a slippery slope, I'm not going to let them go down that road. So like inside of me, something drew me that, that Sunday service, like I told you. And then later on, I told her that, yo, you know, I, I gave my life to Jesus, you know, kind of inspecting. I'm, I'm kind of expecting like a celebration. She's all upset. She's angry. She's like, you better don't you make that decision without me. How could you do this? And blah, see, blah, <laughs> left and right. And right. I'm like, man, what is this? And, 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 and the thing that was disturbing her was trying to draw me into temptation. As I told her, I said, yo, we got to get our lives right right now. Can't be doing all this no more. Yeah. But um, God's grace, man, and, and she was able to be, let me tell y'all something, man, when I talk about a testimony, my wife's testimony hits me every single day, because, because, let me tell you the truth, let me tell you the truth, let me tell you the truth, she did not go to church, okay, she didn't know a lick, and this is living in America, she did not know the, a lick of the gospel, didn't know other. She saw. She 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 knew Jesus. She thought it was stupid that he died on a cross. That was her mind. That was her mindset. Why did he have to die on a cross? She didn't know what that meant. But yet God touched her, and He used her to talk to me. It's crazy. It, it, it's, it's crazy. When she said, "I thought I wasn't gonna go to hell. I feel like I'm gonna go to hell because of what what we just did." I said to myself, "Come on, you kidding me?" I'm like, are you ridiculous? This is this is supernatural. <laughs> and, 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 and honestly, she was a former bisexual. Mm -hmm. For anybody that says that this thing, okay, it, it, I was born this way, or or and I'm not making no, I'm not casting no judgment. I'm not I'm not preaching no hate speech here. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I I love my I, I love the homosexual community. We God bless them. Um, whatever you you know, whatever the case you may feel, the truth be told, though, my wife was a struggling. She was struggling with these bisexual thoughts. She was struggling with these desires. Okay, and mm -hmm. she went through great lengths to fulfill them, coming back feeling empty, coming back feeling void, not like she's feeling like she was gonna burn and, and be punished for a turn. I didn't tell her anything. In fact, I wanted her to continue in that desire, but there was someone giving her testimony. 
inside her conscience. It was the Holy Spirit of God. And it's remarkable because, you know, to this day she's free. You know what I mean? Free from pornography, free from um, all types of, uh, of sexual desires that uh, do not come from the Lord, that are unholy. And, and yeah, so like God is so good. She made, a, she made a decision in her heart to say, you know, I'm trusting that God's way is the right way. My wife's testimony is, is amazing. I, I love what God's done in her life. Yeah, God has definitely done something amazing in Steph. Um, definitely turned it around full 180. Um, you know, I just, I know that, you know, at times she talks to people, you know, outside in the street, you know, at times she gets shy, but at times, you know, that boldness just really just, you know, takes her up and, you know, she just begins to tell people about the love of Christ. And I know that she's not ashamed to testify because, you know, just what God has done in her life is so powerful, so amazing, you know, and nowadays we see people saying like, I can't get away from it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason why we coming on tonight is to let people know that, yes, you can. You know, I, I didn't even know you were going to testify that tonight, but I mean, I'm glad that you did because, you know, there, there, there's there's a, um, a video surfacing on the Internet um, about a woman testifying that she was in deep sexual sin and she was watching pornography and that somebody found her laptop and she said, uh, they told her, well, we know that this isn't you because women just don't have this struggle. Mm -hmm. And I just found that to be like so just so erroneous and so wrong because, you know, God made man and woman to have their wants, their needs bodily because, you know, he wants us to procreate um, and he wants us to express our love to each other as man and wife, man and wife, mm -hmm. married folk. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, man. So, you know, there, there's a there's a lot of women, you know, that, you know, they might be watching now, or they might be watching later and they're saying that. People, people told me that women don't go through this, that this is not for a woman, this is not a woman's problem. But, you know, that's a lie that goes on in, yeah. in the community. That's a lie that goes on um, in, in, in a lot of offices and a lot of places that, you know, people just say it's not, it doesn't happen to women, but that's not true. So, you know, I'm glad that you were able to share that about your wife because, you know, you give hope. That testimony gives hope to a lot of women that say, I can get out of this too. You know, obviously, we, we speak from a male's perspective and, you know, we counsel males and, and let them know that, yeah, you know, God can put you back together. Um, but it's very also important for women to know, you know, I can be free, you know, because this is not just a man struggle. This is a people problem. This is a person. This is a people struggle. So we just want to let you guys know that I'm just glad that you brought up that testimony, man. Um, so just, you know, before we, we pro before we put an end to this. Um, you know, there's, there's been a grace made available to us. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there, I, I just want you to, to shed some light on the grace that's been a, made available to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. because, you know, a lot of people feel like you used to feel that they mm -hmm. used to say, I can't walk up in an office and tell a pastor this or leader this because then, you know, they're going to shun me and throw me out of the church and then they, they want nothing to do with me. But the Bible does say, you know, to confess, then to pray, and then you will be healed. Um, obviously, when we tell people to confess, it is to somebody spiritually mature. It is not just to any person on the street or any person sitting in a church pew. It is to somebody that you know that can help you biblically and spiritually. But I just want you to talk about the grace that's been available to us, that is available to us, how it's been made available to us, because there are people out there that don't know about this grace, mm -hmm. and they need to know, they're hungry to know, because they're mm -hmm. saying that somebody is going to shun me, throw me out of a church. They're never going to allow me back in because yeah. of how perverted I've thought or how perverted I've acted, but nothing could be further than the truth, because shame and guilt comes from the enemy yes. but the power to be put back together again comes from god so yes. obviously i know that i have to go i've had to go through a situation or a process of sanctification like you spoke about earlier mm -hmm. you know you got the grace to you know go through it quickly god just did an amazing miraculous turnaround but you know, you've obviously seen other people go through the sanctification process. And I know you could talk about it firsthand um, because you've seen it. So 
just let the folk know before we go off air, um, the grace has been avail made available to us and the power of it. Okay. People need to know the power of the grace okay. that's been made available to us, man. Definitely. Yeah, um, Gloria, love you. Miss you. Amanda, love you. Marianne, love you. Love you, my ladies. Listen, um, the grace, man, it, it, it's, um, it's good. Um, all right, so there's this portion in, in, in Colossians. I just want to turn real quick. Um, I, don't, I don't remember about heart, but I know it was in Colossians. I know it was in Colossians um, chapter 1. Be patient with your mans right now. All right? It's good, it's good. This is coming from the Apostle Paul. This man was a powerhouse. And um, this man um, <clears throat> um, really went um, above and beyond for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But many people will look at it like, man, you know, wow, he just had a gift, man. He had an anointing. He, he had this. He had that. But this, one, this is coming from, from, from him. And um, um, I want you guys to, to look at this here. So this there's this word that goes um, saying, I labor, I strive, I do this. A lot of times Christians really do believe that they have to do certain things, okay? And, and, and it comes from within. It comes from a, a willpower. Um, that works um, in, um, in a humanistic view. Um, Christianity is not a humanistic view. Um, in fact... Um, you get the 10 easy steps. You get a lot of self-help books nowadays. And, and, and let me tell you something. I want to recommend a book for you guys, yo, um, before we, um, you know, before I leave. I want to recommend a book. This is, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Best book, man. Yeah. I want to recommend a book for y'all, man. Um, many books um, pro promote 10 easy steps. This is just one way. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. So, um, okay, so like, um, you know, he, he's talking about um, here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 29. He says, all right, I labor, okay, for this, striving with his strength. This is a man that was responsible for lifting up many churches um, in, in the New Testament, uh, um, in, the, in the primitive churches um, era. Um, he says, I, la I labor with, for this, striving with his strength. That works powerfully in me. That's Colossians chapter 1, verse 29. This man was a powerhouse, but let us take those words into consideration. He was responsible for uh, a majority of the New Testament scripture. This man lifted up many churches in Antioch. Um, in, in Philippi, in, in, in this church here, um, um, here with the Colossian brothers and sisters, he lifted up many churches. Yo, this dude was a powerhouse. But he said this. He said this. I strive. I labor with the power of Christ, the power of Jesus Christ in me. I can't do anything outside of that. That's Amen. what Paul was saying there. Okay, I can't do anything outside of that. So many people look at grace, okay, as this, once again, Christianese type of word. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That, that's just too Christianese for me. I don't know what that means. How can we dissect that word in this day and age? Well, this word grace, okay, is a lot more than just, I'm going to say grace because I'm going to eat dinner tonight. It, it, it's the power of God working mm -hmm. within you to produce the obedience that his word is demanding. I'm going to repeat that one more time. It's the supernatural power of God, okay, that, 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 that produces with inside man and woman, okay, to, what, to do what his word demands of us, okay? And a lot of the times we get that wrong. A lot of Christians or unbelievers um, they, they, they feel like, man, you know what I mean? This book contains so much laws and so many things that you got to do. It just seems too impossible for me. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Okay, if that was the case, then I wouldn't be able to do this. <laughs> tell you the truth, right now, I wouldn't be able to be a Christian, man. Yeah. It's the power of God that wakes me up every day, that produces this drive in me, that says, God, I want to serve you. And I fail every day as a husband, as a father, 
as a as a man, as a son, as, as, a, as, a, as a you know, in all the roles in my life, I fail every single day. You just last night I failed my son in a way that I, I was just I was just like, man, what 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 am I doing? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, yesterday I failed my wife, and I was saying to myself, "What are you doing, Jose? What's going on?" But let the truth be told, y'all, to everybody on, on, that we're sharing with you with tonight, my brother Chris, your man's here right now, Jose. We're telling you right now, this this thing here. Let me tell you something. This thing here, this faith walk, this this this, this here. A lot of people look at this as this is just too complicated for me. But the simplicity of Jesus Christ is that he is willing. He was willing to die for you. He's willing to give you grace, a supernatural power to serve him, a supernatural drive that you do not have, a supernatural mind that he's willing to give you so that this heart within you produces, okay, what he has called you. You can do it because you were mm -hmm. engineered. You were created by someone perfect to serve him he wants to and he will if you allow him so that's what grace is it's god's supernatural power that mm -hmm. produces a drive a hunger for spiritual truth each and every one of us were created for him and by him and when we live outside of that our conscience bears testimony to us and we say to ourselves we need you there's something like honestly like there were many things that i, I there was many there wasn't many. I love you, Ish. There were so many um, um, things with him. My man Ish is about to get married. Please, for those that are, just pray for my man Ish. It's That's my right. boy. Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> what I was saying to myself when I was, was a younger man, when I was a younger man, like, I was saying to myself, I got to do this, man, so that, so that God could love me. I got I, I, I to surrender this so that, that people, the Christians, can, can accept me. Mm. But, but those things were lies, man. There was a lot of striving going on there. There was a lot of me. I have to. I have to do this. I have to. And God was saying, look, listen, once you kill this whole I thing and you surrender this to me, I will give you a power that you do not understand. It far outweighs your minute concept, your, your, your mind, your your your. Yeah, and that's what it is. That's what it's all about, y'all. Yeah. And um, tonight, just just surrender that to God. For those mm -hmm. that are struggling, serving Jesus Christ. For those that feel like, man, I feel like I'm outside looking in. Surrender this willpower that you feel like you got to do something, that you got to produce something. You can't produce anything. Look, listen, you didn't come to Jesus Christ. My bad. I, I just feel like I, I just got to say this. I know you. Get, I know you got patience, brother. Like. I know, I know that for many people, many people outside uh, of Christianity looks at Christianity like, man, this is just too complicated. But I'm telling you, I'm making a case. Right? I want to make a case here for Jesus Christ. Look, listen, if he did it for a dude that dropped out of high school, a dude that was supposed to be another statistic, I'm supposed to have two, three baby mamas. Okay. I'm supposed to be unemployed taking from the government, I'm supposed to be a leech, okay? Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ didn't create me to be a leech. Amen. He didn't create you to be a leech. He didn't create you to be defeated with your head bowed down and saying, I can't do this. No. Philippians chapter 413, one of the most commonly used Bible scriptures here in America, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, it was never intended just for, for people to wear um, for athletic purposes or for self-help type um, moments. No, that scripture was saying, I can do all things that Christ has demanded for me because he lives in me, mm -hmm. he's my God, and he can guide me to a place mm -hmm. where I can't get myself into. Mm -hmm. I can't get myself above and beyond. And it was never you that chose Jesus Christ. Always remember that, yeah. It was Christ who chose you. He said, come to me. There was nothing that was appealing to him in our eyes. We didn't want nothing to do with him. And I could tell you, me and my mans right now that we're doing this, this Facebook Live, we did, if we wouldn't have been here today, there was nothing that, 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 that was attractive to, about Jesus for us. However, his spirit drew us into him. And yeah. because of his love, his mercy, his grace, his, his goodness, 
we're able to come now and testify about his goodness, his love, his mercy for each and every one of you. Stop feeling like you got to bring something to the table because in many of the religions, Buddhists, Muslims, or whatever the case, uh, any other religion, they have to bring something to their God. In Christianity, God has already brought the best that he has from heaven. And it was his son, Jesus Christ. He died the death that I deserved. Jose Gonzalez deserved to die on that cross. Mm -hmm. He died. He gave me grace. He gave me his spirit, man. He's so awesome. I love each and every one of y'all that are here, man. I pray that the Holy Spirit just ministers to each and every one of you. No one here is perfect. No one here is good. It's only from the Father of lights that we are able to testify about these truths. Good brother, before I um pop a, a head gasket. <laughs> Amen. Man. But then, nah, that's dude, good, you, you man. invited me, son. Yeah, that, that, that's your fault, dude. Nah, that's, man. That's, that, it's all on you. I love I love New York, yeah. This is wow. that's you, man, brother. That's why I invited you up so you could so you could go talk, man. Do what you got to do. Um, just whatever the Holy Spirit impressed on your heart, man. Um, you know, it's amazing that, you know, this morning I was praying and I was saying, God, I just thank you because I can remember a time that I didn't want nothing to do with you. And, you know, you were talking, you were speaking about that. And I was like, wow, that's so amazing. Cause this morning I was just saying, Lord, I just thank you because Jesus wanted me. And there was a time where I was stuck in sexual brokenness and sexual bondage. And I didn't even want to get out of it, you know, um, mm. because, you know, we're 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 in a fallen world. You know, n sin, we can't we can't sit here in front like sin doesn't feel good. You know, people want to say, oh, <laughs> sin don't feel good. You know what? But life in Christ feels greater. Um, and now we know that and we come to that light. And, you know, in first John, he talks about walking out of the darkness and walking into the light, you know, and and there are, there are momentary pleasures that feel good to the flesh, you know, mm -hmm. but obviously we have that conviction from the Holy Spirit, you know, we get convicted, you know, and we know what's wrong. So he draws us back to, back to him, like you said, and he drew me back to him. And I was like, God, I just thank you because I was praying this exact thing this morning. I said, God, I thank you because you knew how to get my attention for me to come back, you know, mm -hmm. to, for you to draw me back to you. You know, you went out amongst the 99 sheep and you came and got this sheep. And you knew how to get my attention. And he got my attention perfectly, you know. And um, I just thank God because I was just able to see that again today and just say, Lord, you drew me back to you. And, and he's amazing because he always wants us to be drawn near to him, you know, because he wants to draw near to us, James 4, 8. So, you know, as you were talking, um, you know, I just, I, I, I just... Like, just this verse here, man, just, you know, just kind of click with me before we go off. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful mm -hmm. and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So for those of you who are watching tonight, it is possible to be put back together again after being sexually broken, after being broken by any sin. Because, you know, we're, we are born into this fallen world and we're going to fall. We're going to sin. None is good. And everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. But if we confess our sins like my brother did to God, he confessed his sins. He said, God, I just need to talk to somebody. But he talked to the father first and the Lord gave him that grace because God is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And he will cleanse us, cleanse mm -hmm. us from all unrighteousness. So God is so amazing because even at times when we don't want him and there's somebody you watching me right now, you didn't want nothing to do with God. But now God is doing great things for you, for your family. And just be thankful. Let's be thankful today, especially here in America. You know, let's be thankful that Jesus Christ has drawn us onto the Father because there's no greater life. There's no greater ending because we are eternal. It just depends on what it just depends on what we allow the eternal end to be, you know. And, and I just remember saying, God. I just, I, you know, just like you said, bro, I want nothing to do with you. You know, you were trying to draw away and he was trying to draw you near, yeah. you know, but I, you know, but we just thank God for Jesus Christ, man. We just thank mm -hmm. God for Jesus Christ because he drew us near. And, and, um, you know, I, I know that, that you're a free man from sexual issues, sexual bondages. And, you know, I can testify that I'm a free man. And, you know, now we're just, you know, just going forward and, and just being better men of God, better husbands, better fathers, because of it, because, you know, what sexual bondage does to you is make you so selfish, 
and not only to yourself, but to your spouse, to your children, to your coworkers, to your family. And it just, it binds you up in such a way. But I'll be talking more about this October 19th. Um, That's my birthday. Uh, down in Brooklyn, New York, yes. That is, um, like she just said, her birthday. <laughs> Praise God. But, yo, bro, I just want to thank you for coming on, man. I just want to thank you for just imparting what the Lord has given in your heart to the people of God. You know, I don't know if there's a last word you want to say to the people of God or to the people that, that right now are not in Christ, you know, because there are definitely some that will be watching this that, you know, they don't have the hope of glory in them right now, but we just pray for them that they do. So, if you know, you have any last words, man, you could just say it before we go off, man. Yeah, a um, couple of shout outs. I love you, Maritza. I miss you. Um, you're awesome. Um, um, man. So many, so many good things. Yeah, today's word um, from the U version. If you got that app, was beautiful. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by His love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, man. If you ever been in a um, church service and you heard the worship, you're like, "Wow, this is so amazing. This is so good." Um, love you. You're welcome, man. You're welcome, man. Um, you know, and, and, and you ever needed like, man, you needed like, like you came to a worship service, like, wow, this, this is some touching music. This is some touching times with the brothers and sisters. Just remember one thing. There is no other song that's greater than the one that's being sang over you right now. Mm -hmm. God is singing a song to each and every one of us tonight. So it says in Zephaniah, he's singing a song of redemption, a song of bringing you and putting you back together again let me tell you something there's no one okay just like Humpty Dumpty right he fell he needed to be put back together nobody could put him back together so let me tell you something in this story it's God who puts you back together mm -hmm. and it's God that knows how to do it because let me tell you something man there's nobody else that can do it there's, I can't do it this brother here can't do it you know, the man with the tie that's preaching this Sunday can't do it. The woman that's preaching this Sunday. But whatever the case may look like in your congregation, we can show you. We're two beggars tonight showing you where to get bread. So I love each and every one of y'all. May God bless you. May God's grace shine upon you. May you accept it. And, um, yeah, holla at your boy. Um, I love y'all. Um, Red Sox suck. Um, and we, we're about, we're about to be out of here. Mets suck. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> we love our Yankees. We love our Yankees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's Jesus, our wives, and then the Yankees. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah. um, so yeah, love y'all. No, honestly, love, love you guys. Um, stay strong. <laughs> Um, be encouraged in the Lord. Um, and um, yeah, please pray. I'm gonna take a moment and just tonight, just pray over my brother because he's about to, oh, he's about to, um, he's about to embark on a journey with the Lord Jesus Christ, October 19th. Um, and uh, I pray that the, the lives that hear that um word, um, <laughs> that they will be blessed and encouraged. That um, that that, that they will be um. They will be filled by the presence of God, um, these youth. I, I, I pray to the God that, that, that you talk to these youth, um, not, not with your words, but with God's words like you will, mm -hmm. and that they will, um, they will just say, wow, I, I needed that word. I needed that truth. I needed that encouragement. So, um, yeah, I just want to take a moment and just pray. Father, I just thank you for Chris and what you're doing in his life. It's been so amazing. Um, Let's see what you've been these last couple of years of Chris's um, heart and his, and his household, Lord. And just, yeah, continue to just bless him and use him. And, um, yeah, um, with this, this video, let it touch the lives it needs to touch. Um, and let this ministry impart um, truths that will um, just break the yoke of Satan. You came to destroy the works of Satan, Jesus, and you do it today still through your body. So um, bless Chris and prepare him on October 19th. And yeah, Lord, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love you, bro. We out. <laughs> we out. We out. All right, that's my guy, Jose Gonzalez, Denver, PA, from Denver to New York. We just bless you guys.
October 19th, Brooklyn, New York, 124 Manhattan Avenue, 7 p.m., Forbidden Fruit Purity Conference. We'll be talking about sexual immorality, sexual bondage, but we'll be talking about liberation, God's grace, God's power, you know, so December 8th, Meriden, Connecticut, we'll be doing the same thing in another conference and other dates to watch out for. I'll let you guys know soon. Um, so just God bless you guys. Share this video because you know somebody that's dealing and going through this right now. So as always, my people, have a good night. I know we went a little long, but I pray that you were blessed and just continue to have a great life in Jesus.